All right, so a lot of stories out today, including this one on our front page. Edge was reportedly not in favor of the Judgment Day going a supernatural route. What? To a report from Fightful Select, Edge being kicked out of the group on Raw may have been a result of his opposition to future plans. Okay, so I was, I was, uh, I think this is all true. Okay. I was told yesterday that, uh, I don't know if it was uh, at the pay-per-view or at some point over the weekend, uh, allegedly Edge was approached with this idea of, we need to make this uh, Judgment Day more supernatural. Because you know they don't learn anything ever, okay? Ever. It's like, this stuff fails over and over and over and over and over again. But damn it, we're just going to keep doing it. One I of like these days, it actually, it might get over. So spooky. anyway, they approached yeah. him with this, and he was like, hey, it ain't happening. I don't want to do it. And that's a story, okay? And then uh, Monday, obviously, he was removed. <laughs> Losing a fall to Casper. And replaced with Finn Balor, okay? Now. About as white as Casper. I was not directly told that one had to do with the other, okay? But it would seem to make sense that that's why Edge was removed from this group. It's possible that one has nothing to do with the other. And maybe Edge actually, they reported that he had some orbital floor fracture or whatever. <laughs> Which I I guess is possible. I mean, I I once fractured my orbital bone and it sucked, but I could have done an angle. I could have done an injury angle afterwards. So, uh, but for sure, the story about you know Edge being approached and they want the group to be spooky. And when you think about it, when you think about it, I was talking about this with uh, I think Lance yesterday. So yesterday I was ranting and raving about how much Ross sucks and the storytelling is just horrendous. And I was mocking the absolute stupidity of, you know, Edge pinning Finn Balor. And then in storyline the next day, Judgment Day decides, oh, we don't want Edge. We'd rather have Finn Balor. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's totally nonsensical. But if you if you go with the idea that, you know, at the pay-per-view... There were no plans to kick Edge out of this group. And then Edge shows up Monday, and since he doesn't want to do spooky time, they decide, well, we'll put someone in who will do spooky time. We're going to replace you with Finn Balor. And then, you know, they they rewrite everything and they shoot the angle that night. That would explain why it didn't make any sense, because when they did the pay-per-view Sunday, they didn't have anything planned like this for Monday. So based on how, I mean, even by WWE standards, it's pretty stupid what they did. So I'm thinking that it's probably all true, and uh, he turned down the idea Sunday, and then Monday they decided, okay, well, you're out of here, and here's the angle we're going to do. And it doesn't make any sense, but who cares? And they they shot the angle. So uh, that's my guess as to what happened there. And at the end of the day, listen, Edge is way better served as a babyface than uh, Captain Droning Monotone is the head of this group. And, bro, all, you know, good for him saying no to spooky time. It sucks. And, like, everybody who... Have you ever noticed, by the way, everyone's like, oh, well, Bray. Bray sold a lot of belts for this... Dude, Bray got fired, okay? Where's Bray right now? <laughs> well... Like, dude, every single person... Let's think of the people that have been invo involved with the spooky time gimmick. Seth Rollins, whose babyface career was killed by it. Bray Wyatt, who ended up being fired. Alexa Bliss, who ended up taking off TV forever, then they brought her back and tried to redo Spooky Time, and then it still didn't work, and so now she's just a wrestler again. Uh, Joe Gacy, who's just like, you know, Joe Gacy, if you guys didn't watch NXT, now he's a manager. He's managing the other two hooded blokes. That's, that's what they have him doing now. So, you know, a lot of good that did him. So, no, nobody ever, 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 ever benefits from spooky time yet here we go oh you know it's gonna get this uh, judgment day over let's make them spooky that's good we'll do some supernatural stuff with this group that's gonna help and just like not happen under my watch and it's not it's happening under finn balor's watch now so anyway that's the story i heard
I thought it was pretty dumb how they got there and to kick Edge out of the group and bring in Finn Balor, a guy that's, you know, the last time he did spooky time, his lights went out and he fell off the ropes and then he disappeared for a while. And this was the loser that now they beat and is now going to replace Edge. Okay, I thought that was a dumb way to get there. But I, then I thought, much like you, Edge really isn't working in this role. Him going away for a while, coming back as a baby face, watching these three stand on their own, maybe a good idea because, in a way... You know, maybe copying the House of Black or whatever, but if nothing else, Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest standing there with the possibility of maybe taking them to another level, that was a good, exciting thought. Now I wonder, again, since you're playing spooky time, how is this going to benefit Damian Priest, who should be a star right now, and Rhea Ripley, who also should be a star right now, or at least on her way to becoming one? You we'll know, can I talk happens, about? But come on, now. can I talk about come some history on. real quick? Sure. Because I see the chat here going, "Oh, it worked for one guy, Who, the Kevin Undertaker." Sullivan? Okay, Undertaker. Let me tell fine. you all about the Undertaker. <laughs> Let me tell you about the Undertaker. They don't. There's okay. a lot of history to. Go yeah, ahead. that's the point. One of the reasons the Undertaker is such a legend is because he was around and pushed as a main eventer for like you know 30 years. Okay, that's one of the things. But if if you remember, like the hottest period in in uh, in WWE history, mainstream, he wasn't Spooky Time Undertaker. He was a biker. He was a biker during that entire period. The other reason the Undertaker got so over was because of his WrestleMania streak at a period of uh, six seven years where he had nothing but fantastic matches at WrestleMania. And guess what? It wasn't because of Spooky Time. It was because of what a great worker he was and what legendary WrestleMania. He had two with Shawn Michaels. He had two with Triple H. Uh, who else did he have in that uh, that time? But anyway, it was like one. And then, of course, the, the legendary Brock Lesnar match, which let me tell you something. There was nothing spooky about the Undertaker-Brock Lesnar feud. Okay? Nothing. All right? When he was spooky, when he was spooky... Uh, this was like early 90s when he was floating to heaven, when he was, uh, you know, buried and levitating. You know, uh, that was not a strong period for WWE. That was not a strong period for The Undertaker. The actual spooky Undertaker period was not an over lucrative time for the company or for The Undertaker. So it didn't even work for that guy. Plus, Brian, my God. Do you remember him making Vince McMahon's teddy bear, his childhood teddy bear, burst into flames? Do you remember that? If they were not as hot as they were, and granted, it's easy to say, well, yeah, if they, of course, if they weren't as hot as they were. Some of that stuff, in hindsight, if you would have done it any other time, if they weren't hot and it didn't involve Austin, it would not have worked. And there is no it's Steve Stephanie's Austin bear. Now. There is No, it was Vince's. Vince, it was Vince's bear, I believe. Maybe That's it was Vince's was bear that he gave to Stephanie or something. I don't know. <laughs> it was just, oh, my God. Again, some things only work in time and place, and that was a great example of it. I do love this. Take Undertaker as Ministry of Darkness taker drew $10 million. They do. They do, drew $10 million because of the Ministry of Darkness? Not because of The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> yes. and Vince McMahon. And that's why it was the Ministry of Darkness. I got it. Yeah. Many dynamics at play okay. here. It wasn't that's like saying, of Midian. you know, uh, last year, you know, <laughs> oh, WWE. Viscera, that's what it was. They grossed a billion dollars. So it was because of Bray. Bray. No, it wasn't. It was not <sighs> because of Bray. No offense to anyone named Bert. But when no. you spell it with a U, it's much worse. Vinny, you got to go to NXT, and your name is Bert, okay? You can either spell it B-E-R-T or B-U-R-T. You're going to look at both of those, you're going to go E for sure. Yeah. Right, Craig? Craig knows. Yeah, because, like, it's like I drank so much, I burnt. <laughs> you know? <laughs> what? First it was Narcissus. Okay. But then later it changed to The Narcissist. Yes. With a T. Yes. But that wasn't Narcissus. That was The Narcissist. The Narcissist. No! The Narcissist. Who cares? Bert. Yeah. yeah. Bert Narcissist. <laughs> like, Bert. Bert. I'm sorry. I need to recover from Bert Narcissist. <laughs> He's such a narcissist, he kept the name Bert. Yeah. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. 
Join us today.